Yeah, man, we, we made a mess of a game that we knew it's, it's always going to be on the edge because we are playing against a team that is very good on counter-attack. Initially, I think we, we did not counter-press enough in the early stages, maybe the first 20 minutes of the game. And Dupree forever gave us problems behind the defence. But uh, immediately after, we considered a goal and we, we pushed the central midfielders to try and put a little bit more pressure on, on Robin Joannis, uh, Sinkala, because they were the ones who were finding the space behind the defence, even, even Robertson. I think we did very well in that regard. And uh, the confrontation of Lebu and Mark Van Hipden did a very good job there because if Mark had more time, he's got a very good tag on ball anywhere in the field. But Lebu took, always took a very good angle to kill the, the, the area where he wants to swing the ball to us. And it frustrated Mark a lot because he was forced to play a lot of balls inside. And he's always looking for possibilities to get the ball so that he can play the ball behind the defense. I think that aspect helped us a little bit. But uh, I must say it, it was a very tough game. We always know when you play Stellenbosch, you're playing against a team that is very astute defensively. And uh, in their counter-attack, they are, they are very potent. And honestly speaking, it, it, it was a game that one would never expect there could be five goals. It's always a one-goal match or two-goal match. It's never a game that has got too many goals. But yeah, that was good probably for the viewers. But one thing I appreciate the most is the fighting spirit of the team because we are going to find uh, situations like this even in the Champions League. We still have to fight very hard and coaches also come with good options and strategies in terms of substitutions, which at times can backfire, but we, we, we knew what we were trying to do because we knew we needed people that can play between the lines and Kemit came in and, and helped, helped us in that space. Kapinga also came in and helped us in that space. Then we, we pushed to Tapelo very late in the game so that Lebu can join in in the midfield and add a little bit of a number in and around the, the zone 14 or the D-line. Then we, we managed to, to snatch the game during those moments because it was always going to be dangerous when you are always in the opposition half and you've got the whole half on the other side open against Skelem, against a Dupree. Uh, and I think the moment they did not have to play, it, it went out a little bit better because those young boys, even Adams, was a very, very big problem behind our midfield. Thank you. Coach, congratulations. Uh, if I can just squeeze in two questions there. One <coughs> on um, <clears throat> your striker, Peter, who scored, obviously, the, the, the winning goal. There's lot, there was a lot of halabaloo about his price tag from his previous club when he joined Mamelodi Sundowns and obviously a lot of eyes on him. Um, just how do, you, how do you rate him? Obviously, do you think, you know, arguably the, the best on-form striker at the moment? And the question around the uh, of the goalkeepers, uh, was it maybe Kennedy was unavailable, Ricardo, the agreement to, to rotate? goalkeepers for the for the net bank cup okay starting with uh, peter i think he's one of the most most professional players that i've ever worked with before uh, you can never falter anything when it comes to his level of professionalism and the way he he tries to adapt to the tactics and whatever the coaches are asking from him and also the physical exertion that he puts into the match, uh, the commitment that he gives you, uh, it's, it's, it's an epitome of what you would want to have, maybe have more than five Peter Shalule as in your team, which I think in our team, we've got quite a lot of players like those who are relentlessly trying to do the best in the team. Uh, in terms of his scoring, more than anything else, <clears throat> I think I appreciate more the fact that he's not selfish as a person. Uh, there are many instances in the club where he has made other people to score. Just last week, uh, in the previous match against Chipper, he had an assist towards Lebo on the far post, and he also assisted on the goal of Gaston. And he takes some of these chances. He's not a very refined striker. He still makes some elementary technical mistakes, but uh, you can live with those mistakes because he gives you his heart. And for me, 
that is more than anything. When a player gives you everything that he can give you, you always have room for some of the mistakes that he will make in the process. So I think he is trying to repay maybe uh, the confidence that the team has shown in him, the president, uh, for having invested so much money in making sure that we get him. Uh, you expect a lot of players to be that selfless in making sure that it's not about them getting what they want, but they also give themselves to the team. And that is what Peter is doing. In terms of the goalkeepers, uh, it's, it's, it's just unfortunate that uh, Dennis uh, had a very stiff hamstrings based on the match that we played against Chippa because the field was very heavy, it was raining and uh, very soft. But to be honest with you, it was also important for us to, for us to have Goz playing because Goz is a very important player for the national team. And uh, for him not to get a chance to play is always not going to be, to be good. And we always wanted to give him an opportunity, but unfortunately at times he would be out because of this and that and that when we wanted to use him. But this time around, we gave him a chance. And I, I honestly believe he did well. Uh, and we know the quality that he presents as a goalkeeper. And it's important that all our, our goalkeepers get an opportunity so early in the season so that when they are given an opportunity, when the going gets tough, they are able to help the team in that, uh, at that moment. Uh, Coach, uh, my question is just on you know the substitution, uh, bringing on Kemi Erasmus and uh, Lissarika Pinga. And they connected very well for 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 that for that equalizer for for that uh, goal to win the match. But unfortunately, uh, Stellenbosch equalized. But also at the same time, Kapinga has been doing very well in terms of you know uh, moving forward and and assisting. You know the winning goal even in the previous match, he also did that. I'm sure it's something that you are happy about. To remember the beginning of the season, you talked about him. Uh, 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 doing more and trying to, to, to show more of resilience to say that I want to play. And now it seems like he's repaying them. Yeah, the, the thinking of bringing Kapinga and, and Kemet was exactly for, for those reasons, because Stellenbosch was sitting in and we knew it's going to happen at a certain point in the game, uh, that they will be closing and they defended probably with two lines, which uh, was very wide at times with six players across or five players across and still in front of those you have another four or five that you have to deal with. And you needed nippy players that can play in between the lines and players that can play under pressure of space, opponent and time. And uh, Mshishi had done very well in that regard. And you just felt maybe let's change and, and bring in players like Kapinga and Kemit, not because uh, Mshishi offers less quality in that space, but just to give in, bring in fresh legs to, to help the team because we were, they were sitting with this block from the beginning of the match and it requires a lot of movement and dynamism from more especially our creative players to find openings and pockets of spaces in between the lines. And Shishi had worked extremely hard to give us that. Then at a certain point, it was important for us to, 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 to refresh the team. And that's when we thought of Kemit and Kapinga. Uh, in fact, we were even considering Domingo to come in because we wanted players that can play in those small pockets without always looking to come out and, and play in front of this big block. But to have people that have the tenacity to, to be able to, to find openings, even when there are no openings. And uh, that's what they, they did exactly. Tapinga has been working very hard in training. His uh, attitude as a, as a player is very good. He's very interested uh, and he loves the game, which is the most interesting thing. I always say, Chambers one is successful in football because he loves football. Kapinga, you can see, is a township boy that wants to play. At Sundowns, initially, he made a lot of mistakes, technically losing possession, and we had to fight with him and get him right to understand that in a big team, losing possession is a very big crime because every team that we play against is looking for the space in the opposition, in, 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 in our half, because we are always in and around the center circle or the center line. So if you lose possession, you always present moments of us having to face a counter attack. So it becomes your responsibility as well to know that when we lose possession, can we counter press immediately and make sure that we don't give space and time for the opponents to be able to find those openings behind the defense. And he has improved tremendously in that space, but his defensive play still needs a little bit more attention. 
But the good thing is he's trying very hard. He has never been that player before. He was playing with a lot of freedom at Black Leopards. Defensively, he would cheat a little bit, waiting for those good moments to take you in attack. But uh, unfortunately, in a big team like Sundowns, everybody has to, to put a shoulder to make sure that the team wins. Uh, Coach Manova, uh, congratulations on going to the next round. Uh, my question is on Sundowns uh, conceding so late in the, in the game after scoring. You know, you think you'd shut the, the back door immediately after scoring. What would you up, uh, attribute that to conceding so late uh, in the game? Thank you. Yeah, man, uh, it's just unfortunate, but it's something that we have to look at very closely because it has not happened a lot. We've not considered a lot of goals in this season in general, but against Swallows, we considered very late. And today, again, we are conceding in that last minute of the game, uh, which calls for our experience for the Champions League because you can't immediately after scoring a goal in those dying moments of the game and just let it loose. But uh, I've not done any video analysis of that goal. I still have to look at exactly what happened and be able to, to come out with something because against Swallows, it was unfortunately a free kick, uh, which was an outcome of a foul that we considered, which was a very unnecessary foul. And we considered a goal from there. On this one, I, I'm not sure what happened on the, on, the, on the white channel, because when the ball came into the box, I saw that someone was not picked up. But uh, at this stage, I don't have uh, clear video footage. And whatever I'll be saying will be very subjective. I prefer to, to talk when I've seen exactly what has happened and make a submission that I know is exactly what has happened because I would not say it's because the team is not fit because we would not have fought back and, and made sure that we, we get a winning goal. But uh, those lapses of concentration will, must always make you as a coach to worry as to what exactly is happening. But uh, we will be looking into it very closely.